the name of the eternal Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome all of us to this very epoch-making event of the dedication of this building called our Savior's Chapel. It is something gratifying that after five years, this place is being dedicated to the glory of God. And so we give all the glory, all the honor and praise to our Lord King of Glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I should like to thank God for the presence of our legal secretary for acting constitutionally to this family and uh, for bringing out that rich history of all who have worked all who have contributed the genesis of this church. May the Lord continue to enable you with power constantly in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome all our dignitaries and their wives. And I welcome all our priests and their wives. And I congratulate all members of this church. It's been a busy week for the clergy of this diocese. And uh, the last two or three days has been very hectic. Even today, some of us traveled back from Malaysia straight to this service. We pray for more strength. But what I know of Dr. Wishenge, no matter how tired we are, we don't have the excuse even for tomorrow. We have to be present even if we are tired. So if you don't want him to rule it against you, be present for tomorrow's function. And God will continue to grant us strength and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. And on that note, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Bushenge, the Archdeacon of this Archdeaconry, and Mama Bushenge, for the energy you people have deposited into what we have done today to the glory of God. I pray that the Most High God will continue to bless your ministry and to entire life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The same thing I should want to express to find gratitude. To Professor Olale and Professor Mama Olale. <laughs> I think God did something for Professor Olale. He went to East Africa. And since he came back from East, East Africa, he has been on fire. For the Lord. Congratulations. Very significant in that 
it does not only consider previous, it considers the present and look forward to the future. Our name here is our Savior. And that is the same as Emmanuel. Of course, he tells it very well that our Savior's job is in a police barrack. The police is supposed to be our Savior. I'm not saying they don't save us. They are supposed to be our Savior. We are in their setting. So the two considered together is a situation that brings about salvation. A situation that brings about redemption. Therefore, this church and members must practicalize the meaning of the name of this church. Our Savior, Olubalawa, Olubate Njeni Yegebiyomojo. And on this day of your dedication, I want to ask you, are you truly living for the meaning of your name as our Savior? Are you saving each other? Are you making any acts of salvation to this community? Are you making acts of salvation within yourself? Or it is just a sign word of our Savior? No! When you say your church name is our Savior, it means Emmanuel. And it means Jesus. And by Jesus, we talk of Joshua. Because that is the meaning of the name of Jesus. So the question as you dedicate this building, in effect, are you being dedicated? Are your activities actually showing that yes, you are living true to the name that you bear? Especially in act of salvation, act of mercy, act of restoration, of forgiveness. That even members of this church don't forgive themselves. They will have to go and change your name immediately. Acts of forgiveness. Acts of healing. Healing is not only when you perform a miracle to somebody, a cripple gets up and begins to walk. Your precious words can heal. Your precious support can heal, can encourage one another. We call it edification. The acts of goodness is sharing. That's the meaning of what is expected of members of this church. I remember two incidents that happened I witnessed in the north. I was involved in that incident when I had not come into the ministry. I was working in an institution and that institution is a combination of the high, the low, domestic cadre, and so on and so forth. We were not high then. We were not even intermediate. We were close to the ordinary level. Not GC, but the ordinary domestic people. And we had to man at a, an office in a department that had HOD, secretary, and name it. And the lower cadre are clerical staff. You know, they put a big name on it at that time. You think it's a big office, it's not. They say clerical officer. You know, the clerk in German. And there are those who work following after those ones as messenger, cleaner, and so on and so forth. We have good relationship with all of those, myself and my colleagues. But the relationship between the very low staff and the upper end column was nothing to write home about. Because they were playing to type of their position, authority. I wrote to one day. That one day, because of the good rapport between us and them, something terrible was to happen. And speaking of that, they were all assembled at work at 10 o'clock. And these messengers and cleaners came to the office that we clerical staff are because they were free to come in and we just relate. Okay, they said it to the local people, the local Go home now, now. Don't even look back. So what's happening? Something terrible is going to happen now. Go home now. Don't look back. Or don't say to them. Yeah, okay. You are telling them to go home. What are our that today? Leave them. We will go and tell them what happened. Never knowing that they did not tell them. Immediately we left. Went back home. 